changed it in a way that most of us have never seen before. Those of us who were born after the end of the Second World War will have not seen such a drastic change to our landscape before. And although it started in China back at the end of November, early December last year, it's only been in the last month that we have felt it on our shores here in the UK. Life has changed drastically. We find ourselves in lockdown social distancing, social isolation, all of these terms that didn't mean anything to us before. And so we find ourselves as Christians in this place thinking, how do we respond? What does this look like in this unprecedented time as so many people keep talking about it? What is it that we are called? Who are we called to be as followers of Jesus? And we know that we put our hope in a very certain God when our situation and our circumstances are far from certain. We talk about this. We've just experienced Easter, the life, the death, the resurrection, the passion of Jesus as he came and conquered death once and for all. But what does it look like on the day to day? Can we hold our emotions of frustration and anger and anxiety in front of God? Or should we merely be suppressing them? Should we have that British stiff upper lip? Should we be stoic about it? Should we be calm and carry on? I want to suggest that actually a wonderful place for us to start is through lament. And lament is a word that's taken from the Latin, which means to wail, to moan, or to weep. That actually is totally okay, more than okay actually, God wants us to be open and honest with him about how we're feeling about our situation. And the two prominent places that we find lament through the Bible are in the book of Lamentations, and these would be five poems written um, referencing the destruction of Jerusalem back in 586 BC or thereabouts. And then in the Lament Psalms, the Psalms of anguish, the psalms of despair and um, terror that the psalm writers find themselves in. And it's these lament psalms which we're going to focus on through these next four sessions. And there are various interpretations about the lament psalms and their original setting in life, where the, they would have occurred. And some some people suggest that they were a product entirely of the temple, that they were a part of gathered worship in response to specific certain events which were taking part. Other people believe them to be a product of something more akin to what we might see as like a home group or a life group today, a small intimate group of people who would help to rehabilitate the afflicted person after they'd gone through a really bad situation, to kind of love them back into wholeness, loving them back to life and ultimately to relationship with God. But whatever their original setting in life, these lament psalms, I think, are crucial um, for us to engage with, to study, um, to get a grip of as we tackle what it means to be Christians in this coronavirus world. They give us an opportunity to give voice, to give words to the feelings that sometimes we don't even have words for ourselves. And on the whole, I think, actually, churches across the world have not been very good at engaging with lament throughout our history. Lament can seem to sit quite uncomfortably with our praise and our celebration of Jesus' triumph over death sometimes. We tend to focus on the positive things, on the mountaintop experiences of faith, but actually what does it mean for us to wrestle with the low, low valley points as well of faith? Lament is a key aspect of the life of faith. Jesus experienced it. 
Jesus when he was with his friends Martha and Mary. Remember his, their brother Lazarus. Lazarus, the shortest verses in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus knew what it meant to experience human suffering. And the Old Testament scholar Walt Brueggemann, he's written about 60 uh, books on the Old Testament. He knows his stuff and he speaks about the Psalms showcasing the two extravagances of human experience. On the one hand, praise, and on the other hand, complaint. The two extremes of emotion which every single person feels, whether they're a person of faith or not. On the one hand, celebration and great joy, and on the other, loss, despair and grief. And so over the next couple of sessions, we are going to be exploring the stages of lament, what Walt Brueggemann describes as orientation, disorientation and finally reorientation and how we can begin to incorporate lament into our daily walk with God, but also into our wider gathered worship as well. We're not sure, actually, how long this pandemic will go on for, but it's my great hope that through it, the worldwide church will reconnect with lament as part of the life of faith, both for the individual but also for the corporate gathered church as well. As we keep hearing from our government's daily briefings, we are in this together. This is our collective responsibility as the body of Christ to model to a world which is so broken and so hurting and so in need of good news and hope and in need of Jesus's healing touch. As we engage with lament, in a healthy and positive way, then that ripple effect will spread out across our communities and change our nation, I believe. So we, as we end this first session, I'm gonna read the words of one of the most famous lament Psalms, Psalm, Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Let's pray. Father, you are the one who allows us to show the full experience of human suffering. You allow us to come before you. You don't expect us to have it all together, but you say, come, come and share your burdens, come and lay them down at the foot of the cross. Any emotion, any feeling is acceptable in my presence. And I pray as we look at this theme of lament over these sessions that you would help us to see more of your heart, both for us as individuals, but also for your heart to restore our world back to relationship with you. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen.